what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be covering a fairly simple topic that doesn't really get enough attention and that is how to instantiate controllers from a storyboard so here we've got a screen a button tapping it just brings up this controller but the important thing here is the concept of interrupting your storyboard as well as code uh, oftentimes people get hung up on a debate of you should only use code or you should only use storyboard but realistically a lot of my apps a lot of professional apps are a little bit of both so it's very important to understand the semantics of uh, using both of them and being comfortable with it so that said make sure you destroy the like button as always hit that subscribe button while you're at it get good ready get excited let's jump right in quick pause before we get into the video if you haven't seen it already I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so we're going to begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with a single view application and I'm going to go ahead and call my project uh, view controllers from storyboard. And let's go ahead and create this, make sure it is storyboard in Swift. And I'm going to go ahead and save it in this iOS Academy folder and we'll jump right into it once Xcode decides to stop being slow. There we go. Perfect. So let's expand our Xcode window a little bit, give ourselves a little more room to work. And let's also select the simulator. Obviously, we're going to be running this. I'll stick with a Pro Max, hit that run button so it boots it on up for us. And then we can get into setting up our controllers. Let's so give it a second. There it goes. There it is move this guy over and give it a few seconds hopefully and while it's doing that let's talk about what we're going to be setting up so this template obviously gives us a standard view controller so let's come in here first and foremost and let's just set its background color to be something other than the default so once the autocomplete decides to kick in there it goes we'll set the background color to link which is a blue so here, I believe the simulator is in dark mode, hence the black background, but go ahead and hit Command R and your controller's view should be blue now, like so. And we're gonna be adding a button and tapping that button is going to instantiate the controller from the storyboard. So of course, we're gonna need a second controller. So let's click and right click this and we're gonna create a new file. We're gonna stick with the Cocoa Touch class and it's gonna be a subclass of a UI view controller and I'm going to go ahead and call this second view controller. You can leave this unchecked. We don't need a nib file or XIB. And make sure the language is Swift, of course. Go ahead and create and save it. Let's get rid of this commented out code that nobody ever uses. And let's also give this a background color so we can say background color is green, like so. And let me move this up. So on the first view controller, we're going to add uh, a button. And when we tap it, we're going to show the other controller. So what we actually want here is an IB action. So I'm going to create an IB action. It's going to be did tap button. And we're going to implement this in a second, but we're going to hop on over to our main.storyboard and set up that button and our controller. So here's our default controller that we've got. We're going to quickly open this up, which is our library of elements, find a button, drag it on in, and let's drop it right there. And let me quickly change this to go to other controller. Let's go ahead and change the background color of this. Let's make it look a little bit nicer. It's a little plain right now. Let's make it black so it stands out a little bit. And then let me also add some constraints on this guy by selecting it. Coming down here, we're gonna horizontally and vertically center it. And then we're also gonna set a width and a height. And I'm gonna go with uh, 255 and hit enter and it'll uh, pop into place like so. 
Let's right click this and drag from the IB action to our button and the event that we want for it to trigger is touch up inside, standard tap event. Go ahead and hit command R. You should see your controller. The background will be blue because we set it in code, but now you should also have a button showing up. Awesome, looking good. So let's bring in that second controller. We created a class for it called second view controller. So we're gonna open this and we're gonna bring in a UI view controller and we'll drag it on in like so. And what's Xcode decides to stop being slow. I love how Xcode decides to be slow in all my videos. So hopefully this uh, decides to not get stuck right there. There it goes. Okay, so we brought in the second controller and I'm just gonna quickly go and add uh, just a generic UI view on here. So we can just drop it on like that and let's set a different color for this so we can actually see it. And of course we want to link this controller to that class we made. So you select the controller. I like to select it from up here. You can select it from over here as well. Uh, be careful not to select this because this is actually the view of the controller, not the controller itself. But anyway, select the controller in the attributes inspector, come to this tab and change the class to be the new file you made, which is your custom subclass of a UI view controller. And you should be good to go. So this is the kind of the meat part of the video that I wanted to get to. Basically now to present this controller, what we can do, or what oftentimes people do is they say VC is your second view controller, right? And then they say present the view controller animated true. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. There's actually a major problem with this. So you come here and you hit this and you present it and we see the background color uh, is this green and we are getting that from over here because we set it to green. Uh, let's actually get rid of this and try that one more time. It'll just be a white controller. Well, actually now we don't even have a background color. So uh, irrelevant if we keep that or don't keep that. But the point that I wanna bring across is where's that red view that we brought in? So we have a background color, but it looks like we're missing it. So if we go back to the main storyboard, you'll see that we do in fact have a red view here and we've set the class. So kind of like the question is what gives? Why can't we see it? And the reason is, and this is something which I've realized and I was thinking about this the other day when somebody asked me a question, is something that not a lot of people teach. When you have a view controller that you drag into your storyboard, and even if you set the class here, when you go and instantiate a view controller, there are two ways to instantiate the same controller. Here, we're simply instantiating the class. Our code has no knowledge of the storyboard uh, designed controller here. So what we wanna actually do is we want to instantiate that controller as it appears on the storyboard and that will also include that red background color uh, on that UI view subclass. So the way we do that, there's a few ways to do that, but the way I recommend you guys do it, the easiest way is select the controller and on the same view in the inspector, you have this field, storyboard ID. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call it second. You can call it whatever you want, but you can use this storyboard identifier to instantiate stuff. So now if we go back to the view controller, we can say our VC, instead of this is our storyboard and notice this is storyboard optional because a storyboard might not exist and we want to say instantiate view controller with an identifier and the id we gave it a second and if we want to cast it uh, to our custom class which we don't have to because it's a super class of a ui view controller we can say as second view controller now, because this whole instantiate function returns optional because this ID might not exist, additionally, the storyboard might be nil, we wanna guard it so we can actually unwrap it. We're also trying to cast it here, so that also returns an optional. And if we're not able to do that, we're simply gonna return, and I'm also going to print fail to get VC from storyboard. And now we can leave this line and let's hit command R and see what we get. So it's building, bear with it. Now we're gonna hit this button. And now you see, we still have the green background, but now we also have the like red pinkish UI view that we added. So what we're basically doing here is we're grabbing the controller's designed instance from the storyboard, 
but that controller's uh, that controller on the storyboard has a class set to second view controller. So the thing that some people get confused about is it's not mutually exclusive. In other words, you, you don't have to pick between using just the code or the storyboard. In this case, our storyboard has this red view, but we're bringing in the green view via code, right? So if we actually just didn't have this, I believe the storyboard defaulted the background color to white. Uh, well, we're in dark mode, so it actually adapted properly, but it's this uh, dark uh, gray background, which is the appropriate one for dark mode. So whereas the first time when we just used the class, there was no background color. So that's a key thing that I wanted to share in this video, how to use the storyboard and instantiate controllers from there. Oftentimes a really popular design pattern is when you mix up code and your storyboard, uh, you can build apps that way, but sometimes people get a little concerned about kind of mixing and matching, uh, especially with uh, segues that are connecting different uh, presentation of controllers. So what I like to do often is just design a simple controller here, and you can also write code to interop with it, and you can leverage the benefits of the storyboard, but not have to per se uh, use every single little aspect of it. So with that said, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you enjoyed something, if you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button as always. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, if you've been around and have been watching. Uh, helps grow the channel, helps you make more videos. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.